This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Atara's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Atara. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We start today with the official reveal of Porsche's all new Macan EV. Revealed midweek, the ground up redesign of Porsche's popular SUV packs some impressive specifications inside a fairly familiar form, but makes use of Porsche's all new 800 volt, 95 kilowatt hour usable. PPE platform. At launch, there will be a choice of Macan 4 or Macan Turbo models, both with dual motor all wheel drive. The entry level offers 300 kilowatts at the wheels and up to 381 miles, 613 kilometers of range on the WLTP test cycle. Meanwhile, the Macan Turbo offers 470 kilowatts and 367 miles, 591 kilometers, as well as a 3.3 second sprint time. I'm sure we'll have more, including pricing, very soon. Tesla published its fourth quarter and year-end results on Wednesday this week, and while it had a record-breaking year in terms of sales and production, it missed on earnings in Q4. Recording $25.167 billion in revenue during the fourth quarter versus the $25.64 billion that Wall Street had hoped for, Tesla's quarter ended with adjusted earnings of $0.71 cents per share, down $0.02 cents on what Wall Street had hoped it would be. Year on year, Tesla's total gross profit took a hit, down 23% year on year. And while its total shareholder profit was up 115% year over year, its adjusted earnings was down 39%. That, combined with warnings from Elon Musk that Tesla sales are likely going to cool this year due to a drop in demand, caused Wall Street to react negatively to what was otherwise a reasonable report from Tesla. At the time of filming this on Thursday, Tesla's share price has dropped about 13% this week. Aptera published an update video this week in which it laid out some more details about its upcoming battery partnership with battery specialist CTNS. The two firms signed a master supply agreement at the tail end of last year, and in this week's update, Aptera detailed the $5 million investment made in it by CTNS and confirmed that CTNS, which currently produces battery cells for the robotics industry, will validate and produce the first few hundred production battery packs for Aptera at its facilities in Korea, with plans thereafter to establish a dedicated production battery line at Aptera's facility in Carlsbad, California. While Aptera is still carrying out final validation testing of the production battery BMS, we're told that both battery pack and finished BMS are nearing completion. And yes, in case you're curious, all prototype Apteras I've driven to date used a much smaller engineering battery pack for testing. After what feels like an age, Tesla has finally begun to roll out FSD beta version 12.1.2 to select customers for testing. It's long been heralded by Tesla CEO Elon Musk as the version to bring single end-to-end -end neural net driving to FSD beta, which, as Fred Lambert from Electrek noted this week, is basically shorthand for saying that the software was coded by AI rather than human engineers. Tesla has been testing it internally for some time and promising it for nearly a year, but this is the first time non-Tesla employees have been given a chance to test it. So far, it seems like many testers like the more natural speed control of version 12.1.2, but Tesla also appears to be rolling this one out very slowly for extra cautious initial public testing. Over the last year, the use and safety of e-bikes, e-scooters and e-motorcycles has become a particularly hot-button topic in many major metropolitan areas. Aside from concerns over e-scooter use and parking, battery fires caused by substandard battery packs included in more budget-oriented models has all caused some e-scooter and e-bike bans. And now the mayor of New York City, Mayor Eric Adams, has said he wants to establish a new municipal department focused on electric micromobility, 
specifically the regulation of micromobility e-scooters, e-bicycles and e-mopeds, as well as electric motorcycles, all used in the city's massive package and food delivery fleet. If established, it will be charged with registering and regulating electric micromobility in the city, both in terms of use and also in terms of standards, to help ensure battery packs and vehicles and operators meet required safety standard. Spurred on by the increasingly obvious effects of anthropogenic climate change around the world, world governments are now promising tougher emission standards for cars, along with total internal combustion engine sales bans in the not-too-distant future. But data published this week by the European Court of Auditors shows the stark reality that we're now facing in our push towards a cleaner world. The average emissions of new internal combustion engine vehicles haven't really changed much in the last 12 years. Over the past decade, it states, diesel vehicle emissions have remained about the same, and while emissions have gradually fallen for gasoline vehicles, a 10% increase in vehicle weight and 25% increase in engine power over the same period has nullified most emission reductions. The reason why overall emissions do appear to be falling? That's down to electric vehicles. Without them, we'd be looking at an increase in CO2 emissions. With more and more Tesla Cybertruck reservation holders getting hold of their new shiny trucks, we're starting to hear some interesting feedback from those early adopters. While the majority of Cybertruck owners are enamoured with the way their truck drives, there's a very obvious gap appearing between Tesla's claimed charging speed and range for the same, with the two drivers who helped one particular Cybertruck reach 10,000 miles already stating publicly that they're seeing an average range of around 206 miles per charge when full and 164 miles per charge when they charge to 80% full. That is a massive difference to the 320 miles of range Tesla advertises with all-terrain tyres. That said, the weather in the United States has been terrible for the last month, and at least one of the owners of that 10,000-mile Cybertruck say they drive, quote, aggressively. As is often the case, your mileage will vary. I can drain my Ford F-150 Lightning Extended Ranger's battery pack in less than 170 miles if I drive it like I stole it, but I regularly, in everyday driving, see well over 300 miles possible. So, yeah, let's not put too much into this, eh? In order for the US electrical grid to get a lot greener, we're going to need to see a whole lot more deployment of renewable energy. And this week, the US federal government updated its solar roadmap for the nation, unlocking 22 million acres of publicly owned land for permitting for photovoltaic solar farms. It expands the original 2012 Western Solar Plan of the Bureau of Land Management for Arizona, California, Colorado, Nevada, New Mexico and Utah to add potential sites in Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Washington and Wyoming. The official press release pledges that the BLM will work hard with local communities and tribal governments to permit solar farms in areas that have, quote, fewer sensitive resources, less conflict with other uses of public lands and close proximity to transmission lines, end quote. While electrical vertical takeoff and landing vehicles have become something of a perennial promise of the tech industry, one eVTOL company, Archer Aviation, is making some serious waves of late. Aside from delivering examples of its midnight eVTOL craft to the US Air Force for extended evaluation for military use, the company announced this week that it signed a Space Act agreement with NASA to engage in testing of high-performance battery cells with a view to eventually develop battery and safety testing for advanced air mobility and space applications. As part of the project, NASA will work with Archer Aviation to carry out high-speed X-ray imaging of Archer's cylindrical cells at the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility to better understand what happens when battery cells are pushed to the absolute limit. We'll definitely be keeping our eyes on this one, for sure. In order to transition our world transportation away from fossil fuel and towards something better, we need everyone, not just the wealthy, to be able to come along for the journey. 
this past week, we've seen two very important steps in that process. First, the form of a massive tranche of funding released by the US federal government to improve and establish much needed reliable passenger rail network in the US. And secondly, on Friday last week, the US Treasury Department released additional guidance for the revised 30C tax credit system designed to cover up to 30% of the cost of EV charging installations for both individuals and businesses in, quote, eligible census tracts, end quote. The guidance will focus on low-income communities and non-urban areas, both of which have very much traditionally been ignored by EV charging infrastructure deployments. Bring it on. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. For as long as I've been covering the electric vehicle world, Toyota has remained incredibly sceptical about EVs, despite making the amazingly fun and practical RAV4 EV from the turn of the century. A vehicle which, frankly, could, had the history books have been different, made it bigger than Tesla in the EV world today. At the heart of Toyota's scepticism, at least in recent years, is Akio Toyoda, chairman of the board at Toyota and former company CEO. Despite being replaced as CEO last year, he still holds a lot of sway at the company. And this week, Toyota's corporate newsletter, Toyota Times, republished comments he made at a recent event in Japan at which he yet again attacked EVs, stating that he does not see battery electric vehicles hitting more than 30% market share. He called for more internal combustion engines, hybrids and hydrogen fuel cell drivetrains to be developed and produced. At least his scepticism is consistent. And finally, while transitioning the fleet to electric vehicles should be a top priority for automakers, one thing that isn't thought about much is efficiency and the impacts efficiency has on EV range. But this week, Hyundai Motor Group, which includes Hyundai, Kia and Genesis brands, released a new efficiency booster that it hopes to develop to include in future models. It's called an air skirt, essentially a movable piece of underbody trim that can pop out. It's designed to deploy to deflect air around a vehicle, which improves its aerodynamics and therefore its efficiency at highway speeds. This is all without sacrificing ground clearance. It's specifically designed for larger vehicles like SUVs, which tend to sit far higher above the road and have massive wheels that can dramatically affect aerodynamic qualities. While I think it will add extra complexity, because presumably motors, this has to be better than those passive trim panels that scrape on every speed hump you drive over, right? And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider? It is super easy to make the switch and in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful. Go on. There's still time to make it your New Year's resolution. It's still January just. I'll be back as usual next week, but in the meantime, be sure to check out other great content on this channel, including from the awesome Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. He's always doing something fun and he's well worth a watch. Thanks for watching me today. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of the week. Kakite. See you next time.